Scorpio, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for November 2018. And Scorpio, before we jump in, the new blog is up at stormygrace.com and is there for your viewing and learning pleasure. So I hope you hop over and check it out. You can either go to stormygrace.com or click in the description box down below and I've put a link. So, so far what I have up there for you are the major astrological transits and aspects that are happening for November, December, January, and I'm working on February of 2019. I even put a little blurb in there on how to recognize these different placements in your own chart. So hop over there, check it out. If you don't have a chart, you can get a chart there as well, okay? All right, Scorpio, so this is a movable month. It's kind of neat. We've got forwards going. We've got forwards. We've got planets going forwards and backwards. Some are changing signs. We've got a new moon happening in your sign, giving you this chance for a fresh breath. How gorgeous is that? Now, the things that are happening this month of the things that are happening this month, I am the most excited about the North Node of Destiny moving out of the sign of Leo and moving into the sign of Cancer. This is such a gorgeous energy. And I get so excited about it because wherever the North Node of Destiny goes, you will fulfill something in this area. For you, it's lighting up the ninth house space. So things of publishing, broadcasting, publishing and putting yourself out there, travel, faith, expansion, education, learning, teaching maybe even. These things are, as you look back 18 months from now, you're gonna say, boom, I did do blah, 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 fill it in here. And it doesn't mean that you go out and you create the world's best TV program or anything like that, but you'll see that you have changed here because when the destiny marks come around, we just fulfill them, even if we mean to or not, it's the coolest thing. Now we've also got Jupiter coming out of your sign after 13 months and moving into your next door neighbor of Sagittarius where Jupiter is very, very comfortable. This is the sign that he rules. So there's gonna be some comfortable expansion and this will light up the second house space for you, giving you the opportunity to expand your money, expand your earning potential, take um, a skill or a talent that maybe you haven't been using or you haven't been using as publicly and take it out into the world and do something different with it. It just gives you a really beautiful place to change and expand the image of value in your own life. So it's really gorgeous. Now let's jump in and break this month down, okay? At the beginning of the month, on the 6th, we've got that North Node of Destiny moving from Leo into the sign of Cancer. Like I said, it's going to light up your ninth house space. So you're going to fulfill or create something in this area. Faith, international travel, travel, learning to speak a language, foreign things, education, teaching, ministry, religion, publishing, broadcasting, any of these things fall into that arena. So I look forward to seeing what you come up with. And don't worry, I'm gonna be making a separate video on the North Node of Destiny moving into Cancer, so we'll jump even deeper into that, okay? Also on the sixth, we've got Uranus, who's already retrograde, but he's gonna slide from Taurus back up until Aries until March of 2019. Now this lights up the sixth house space for you. Aries is about that identity. And in the sixth house space, Scorpio, I think you've taken some changes or your identity has changed, whether it's that you went from working all of the time and now you're retired or something around that work life and health life, including mental health life, has taken a shift. Now, with this particular retrograde, instead of having to run all the way back and do all that work, because Uranus has been working on this for seven years, you've done the work, okay? What we're doing during this retrograde period here is looking at, do you still have any habits that you need to break? Is there some vestige of something that's left around here and you've got to get it pulled out, root and branch, let it go because it's not serving you. But I also think it's a beautiful time to take some kind of review. Look at it. What progress have you made over the last seven years? How have you changed? How have you matured? How have you become more innovative, more intuitive and more versatile? in this particular area of your life. So keep me posted on that in the comment section down below as well. Now on the seventh, we've got the new moon happening in your sign, which is beautiful. It's water energy. It's all water energy. When the sun and the moon are together, anything is possible. So at the new moon, we plant these seeds of intention. And I ask you, Scorpio, okay, it has, it is birthday time. Happy birthday, right? We're in it. We're in the game. And what do you want? What do you want for this next year? How do you want to project yourself? How do you want us to see you? You know, what is what is the way that you're willing to regard your outer circumstances? Are you going to trim your lawn? Are you going to redecorate your house? I mean, 
What is it that has changed in how you'd like to represent yourself over the next year? Plant those seeds of intention and let's see what you grow. Now, I also think that this is a beautiful energy for you too. If you have a business, you have products, you have anything that needs to be externally on display to people, this is a beautiful opportunity um, for you to show up magnetic, brilliant, and have us receive you just very differently, fresh, you know? All right, on the 8th, we've got Jupiter moving out of your sign and into the sign of Sagittarius, lighting up the second house for you, expansion of finances, expansion of talents. I even think for some people, you could be making a very um, luxury purchase at some time this year, but you're bringing wisdom to the table when Jupiter's in the game. Now, here's the other thing. Just depending on what this looks like in your chart, you could also be taking some kind of hit or having an experience that has something to do with money or value so that you can learn the wisdom of how this house actually works. So that will depend on your, your personal chart and your maturity, of course, okay? On the 15th, we've got Mars entering into Pisces, and Mars is not comfortable in this placement. As a co-ruling energy to you, you may feel a little bit of a slowdown in this particular um, area of your chart, which is going to be the fifth house, right? Romance, creativity, children, all of these things, you could kind of feel a slowdown because Mars wants to hurry and wants to rush and wants to do things. But Pisces is a slower moving, watery energy, so there's no real rushing about when Mars gets here. So enjoy the slow slow down. Look around in your fifth house space. Conception, and conception can mean more than just babies. Maybe it's a new business idea or something in a current business you've got going on. In your expression, the things you want to say, your art, your investments, your hobbies, things with your actual children, right? Where do these things need a little bit of a different action or where do these things feel unclear or kind of blurry to you and you've got to get some kind of establishment around it? I honestly have to tell you of everything in this particular horoscope this month, this placement I think is the most passive because it may be kind of that fleeting thing in the back of your head where you're like, I wonder what that's about. Not quite sure. And I don't know that you take any severe action on it during the month of November, but it's always good to be aware, right? Now on the 16th, we've got some action, okay? So Venus is going to be coming out of retrograde, holler, okay? So this is going to be in Libra, just in your 12th house space. Now Venus coming direct in the 12th house space, the first thing I think is rest and retreat. Rest and retreat. You just got done looking at relationships and maybe you weren't looking at relationships in the sense of really one-on-one -on -one tackling them, but maybe a relationship or beliefs around relationships from the past or things from the past. You've just spent a whole retrograde looking at the value of these things. What do you need to hold? What do you need to release, right? So now that Venus is out of retrograde, Rest and retreat. Allow your shoulders to drop from your ears. Take a deep breath. Spend some time with this Venetian energy in your 12th house and love on you, Scorpio. Give yourself that nice bath. Can you tell that I'm a Taurus? Because I just want your luxury to really be taken care of, okay? But whatever it is, use this Venetian energy to sensualize yourself back to health, all right? At the same time, we have got Mercury taking a retrograde over there in Sagittarius, so in your second house. Now, when Mercury goes retrograde, it's our planet of communication, decision-making, thinking, um, business deals. Mercury is very savvy. Mercury is a stellar, observant planet, okay? So it's good at checking things out, which is where I think it's beautiful this month because we've got Jupiter over here who's like, hey, we're going to expand this second house arena of your life. I'm going to help you get this bigger. There's going to be abundance here, right? And Mercury is over there and he's like, yes, I agree. Let's do it. But first, before I can just go take an idea or a product or anything out in the world, I have to look around and know what's there, right? Before you have company coming over, uh, don't you clean up your house a little bit? So that's exactly what I think this Mercury retrograde lets us do. You're gonna look back over your finances. You're gonna look back over the things of value. You're gonna look back over your budget. You're gonna look back over the material things in your house. You may even actually decide to have a clean out of some variety. What what pieces of bigger material possessions no longer belong in your world anymore, right? Whatever 
it is, Mercury is going to flip you back around to say, re-look at, reconnect, re-edit, revise, reunion. Someone could definitely come back into your life so that you can see what is out of date, needs to go, or needs to be revised. So that way, when Mercury comes direct, Mercury and Jupiter are prepared to go forward. And you're going forward with clear vision, savvy vision. It's really the wisdom behind that is beautiful. All right, then we amp this up because on the 22nd, it's no longer birthday time for you, but on the 22nd, we move the sun into the Sagittarian energy. So you see the second house just has full light, heat, life, and vitality running to it. So focus on the finances this month, depending on your chart, of course. As we get to the 23rd of the month, we're going to have a full moon happening in Gemini. The full moon says something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. There's going to be a shift or a change. This is in the eighth house for you, but it's in Gemini energy, right? So there could be a conversation that you're having or you're ending a conversation about something with a joint resource. Maybe it was taxes, um, insurance, mortgages, IRS things, I mean, anything like that. Intimate conversations could be coming to an end or you're having to acknowledge something. The eighth house is the house of the truth. So whatever you're gonna acknowledge and talk about and make decisions around, it's gonna be at the truth. There's depth and weight to what you're going to tackle in this particular area. And the truth sets you free, but first it usually pisses you off. You know what I mean. So whatever comes up at this time, remember it's coming to an ending and a adjustment or an acknowledgement so that it can begin again, right? It needs to begin fresh from a truer perspective. I also happen to think that this particular full moon is going to bring some new astrologers, new tarot readers, new light workers to the surface because y'all can't hide anymore. You've been called. Let's go start practicing your craft. And I welcome you 100%. Now, as we end the month, we've got Neptune coming out of retrograde in Pisces in your fifth house. Now, when Neptune is retrograde, you see the dream, you see the vision. It's kind of swirling. You're like, mm, I'm not sure. Maybe a little bit of this it's like you're very much so designing thinking and believing in a space that feels between the worlds it certainly does not feel real yet but what Neptune retrograde feels like is <gasps> something's coming I don't know what it is I don't know exactly when it is but I know it's good I know I'm gonna be okay and something's coming so then when Neptune comes direct here it is it's in your fifth house this is a new beginning right when Neptune's direct we take the dream and we bring it into concrete reality. We can take the dream and make it real. So this is a beautiful time where the thing that you've been feeling, it's been coming, it might be starting to take shape and this is gonna be in that fifth house space. New business, new baby, conception of some other new project. Maybe you're ready to take a risk with your finances. Maybe this is the time where you've said, I need to live my joy, I need a hobby, I wanna go express myself, see these things. Maybe it's even a fresh new relationship with children in your life. It could be any number of these things, but what is certainly happening at this time is that as Neptune Neptune comes back into direct fashion, we can start to see a more concrete, tangible, usable energy that we can do something with. So I wonder what your something is that you're going to do with it. Please, please, please keep me posted. Ooh, Neptune coming um, direct too. If you started a new business, it may help finances come into you as well. So keep that in mind, okay? All right, Scorpio, I hope you have a happy birthday. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in December. Bye.